The NHL has recently just changed their rules on an ongoing uh, mission to make the NHL even more watchable than it already is. And I like watching the NHL. Vic likes watching the NHL. But we are going to play Commissioner here on the post game. I'm joined by Commissioner Vic, Commissioner Justin, Commissioner Jason. There you go. So in context for you guys, the NHL now has a three versus three overtime, which is awesome, uh, in hopes that it will prevent uh, prevent more penalty shootouts. They felt that too many of these games are going to a penalty shootout. Now with three on three, you're talking a lot of open ice. Goalies be warned, you're gonna get some insane speed and attacks going. Just even the lines, most of, most teams are probably gonna run with a defenseman and two of their best uh, attacking forwards. They oh. could have taken it even further by having no icing, no offside, three on three. That, oh, wow. that would have been interesting. <laughs> Uh, that would have been great. Like, I mean, when the NHL got rid of the two-line pass rule, it really opened everything up. But the idea of having no icing, no just be fun. turning penalties off like an NHL arcade would be awesome. So I love this rule change. I'm not sure where you guys stand on it real quick. Justin? Yeah, I think, I think it will make overtime a lot, a lot of fun. I, I do think that a lot of uh, games are ending in penalty shots, and there mm -hmm. should be less of them. Big thumbs up. Vic? Yeah, I'm interested to see how it plays out. They've experimented a little bit in the American League. So now if they can only address the instigator rule, we'll be all set. Right. <laughs> I think it should be three on three, but if it still ends in a tie, it goes to fighting, then a penalty shootout. Send your two best out there, whoever wins, wins the game. Uh, but uh, Vic, we're going to start with you here, because uh, you're going to be the acting as the role of uh, Commissioner Adam Silver for the NBA. What one rule change would you like to make the NBA effective immediately? I would actually like to see them enforce a rule that's been on the book since the beginning of time, which is traveling. And this is one of those things where it's been a slippery slope over the course of time from Earl Monroe to Michael Jordan to LeBron. Everybody's getting away with traveling even more and more. And mm -hmm. I say this as somebody who rooted for the Knicks growing up. You know, Patrick Ewing used to run a marathon when he swept across the lane mm -hmm. without taking a dribble. Uh, let's go back to one of the fundamental rules and actually enforce it before they think of anything new and wacky. Yeah, traveling has become a major issue in the NBA, and especially because of social media nowadays, we get to do the, the counting game where we've seen LaMarcus Aldridge take eight steps. We've seen LeBron James take seven steps. And it happened all throughout the playoffs. And these are, I mean, of course it comes up with the bigger guys like LeBron, but every single NBA player travels. And even off the pivot foot, it's even looking at the same time. It's not even... Is that two and a half steps? No, that's four steps, at least. Uh, every NBA player is at fault for this. But do you think they ever would enforce this rule? Do you think they're going to make this change? I don't think they will because offense sells the game, and it's all about scoring, spectacular plays, dunks, highlights. But as somebody who also can appreciate some good defense, you're trying to teach players, mm -hmm. here are the uh, fundamentals, footwork, keep your hands up, stay in front of the guy. Well, that's a lot harder when the guy can get away with traveling nine miles. <laughs> so, you know, what, what's, the, uh, what's the remedy as a coach, you know, when you're on the other team? Um, you know, do you bring hand-checking back just to keep guys steering them away from traveling? So I just think they need to get back to the basics, enforce the rule. It's been around forever, and some of these athletes are good enough. They're, they have enough skills. Mm -hmm. They can still... Uh, get their points without turning the game into a mockery, or at least that aspect of it. I, I absolutely agree. They have the talent to make this still. I mean, it's not like LeBron James wouldn't have scored as many points in the uh, NBA Finals or even Steph Curry, any of these guys, if they were enforcing all those steps. And they do call the occasional travel. Yeah, it's more when it looks awkward, a guy trips over his own feet. It's like, well, that's got to be a travel. And then sometimes they don't call that <laughs> when they fall to the floor and they're sliding across and they've taken four steps to even get down to the floor. It's unbelievable. But uh, we're going to move forward because now uh, Commissioner Roger Goodellbot. Sorry, South Park. Commissioner Justin, uh, the NFL needs some rule changes. What is one that you'd like to make? I seriously think that they need to move the kickoff back again. Uh, I'm a big fan of stats. I'm a big fan of records. And you're never going to see uh, that record of, of most kickoffs in a career ever again. More often than not, it's a touchback. It makes the game really, really boring. Yes. Really boring. It seems, well, it, in addition to that, it's, mm. you get extra point, right? Commercial. Kickoff. Commercial. Because you just know that between a team scoring and a team doing a kickoff, like you probably have about 20 minutes, maybe get the barbecue going, open a beer, like you have so much time in between because we know that the kickoff, what was there, maybe two kickoff returns for touchdowns last year? I felt like it takes away that element that Devin Hester brought in its entirety. As, as a Bears, a Bears fan, fan, yeah. De 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 Devin Hester was the most like exciting thing that happened in in my time as a Bears fan in the last like 10 years, and you're taking that away from us as, as fans. I mean, there's this fine line that you that you travel between safety and, and entertainment, and 
the kickoff is just so boring now. It's, it's almost pointless. As long as quarterbacks are allowed to throw the football over the middle, it's equally as dangerous as kicking the ball off and having special teams knock you out. Like, to me, it's like such a contradictory argument that they say, like, oh, you can't have a kickoff because they're trying to protect the players. You're not doing a good job of protecting the players regardless where the kickoff is. Yeah, and, and you know, on defense, too, they're trying to prevent, like, blind tackles where you can't see them coming, but on kickoffs, they're literally running straight at you, so <laughs> there's not a ton that... There's not a ton there. Brings back the days of the great show Jacked Up, which they realized probably shouldn't Jacked do that awesome. show anymore <laughs> as players are getting seriously, seriously injured uh, in those plays and, of course, later in their career. Uh, so we move forward. I'm a big baseball fan. I get to act as Rob Manfred here. Uh, I truly believe that the DH is one of the dumbest uh, – I'm sorry. I truly believe that the pitch, uh, pitcher's hitting in MLB is one of the dumbest rules in baseball. The fact that they have two separate rules for two separate leagues playing for the same prize of a World Series makes zero sense. Now, some people want to claim that having the pitchers hit, it, it adds strategy to the game. It adds different elements that, you know, if you have a DH, it doesn't. You're just paying a guy to hit for a living. Now, I think it's either have a DH in both or have a pitchers hit in both. But pitchers can get injured. That's not their role. That's not what they grew up some of them grew up as good hitters, but it's not how they wanted to become a major league player when they were playing in college. They're working on their mechanics. They're working on, in their minors, to becoming the best possible pitcher they can be. Well, I think some pitchers actually take a lot of pride in their hitting. So they I think do. It comes down to maybe an individual uh, mindset. Some guys are just going through the motions. Yeah, I got to hit. Other guys really dial in um, and take pride. It's like, yeah, I'm a pitcher, but I can still get it done, relatively speaking. Mm, yeah. <laughs> The know, pride, at, the, at the plate. See, the pride factor is interesting, but that's why we don't let the players make the rules for these sports. I mean, some of them become executives in the MLB afterwards, but the DH is one of the most, could become one of the most strategized positions in the game. Because if it was equal to both So what if you have leagues, a great hitting pitcher, uh, a guy who you know, hits above average, and you have somebody playing in another position in the field who, who's a terrible hitter, you DH... For the bad field, uh, for the fielder who's also a bad hitter, and let the pitcher hit. There wouldn't be an extra like roster spot added for the NL clubs because the pitchers hit anyway. It's the same roster spots for both leagues. But the fact that there's two different rules for the same sport still makes zero sense. If you have somebody subbing in, I'm not sorry, so not subbing in, but hitting for the DH in the NA and the NL, you're going to strategize for that roster spot. You're going to figure out before the season starts who you want as your DH. Yes, David Ortiz probably can't play the field anymore, or at least not above average to any other fielder or even the average fielder. But he's still an unbelievable hitter and a needed, a needed player on, right now, 15 ball clubs. Anybody would take David Ortiz at the plate. Having said that, it's, you can make the substitution for a worse, hitting, uh, worse hitter taking out your, uh, your good fielder, but you wouldn't need to because you'd have certain players in that position to play leadoff if they needed to hit leadoff for the DH spot. You have a young contact hitter who can run. If you had a power hitter, everyone mistakes the DH for having to be a power hitter, whereas if it was balanced in both leagues, that would drastically change. I think I think the idea of, of equality amongst the leagues when they're competing for the same thing is definitely something that I'm on board with. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about changing a rule that's been around for so long, but I definitely think that, like, are there any other differences between the NL and the AL besides the DH and the pitcher hitting? I, I don't know. Like, it's a little weird that that's the differentiator. Well, for a long time, they used, used to want to have some distinction between the two leagues because unlike some of the other sports where it's just conferences and it all is uh, one league, it's cool to have something that kind of distinguishes one from the other. Otherwise, what's the difference? And already it's been watered down with... Uh, interleague play and you know part of the uh, argument here is also the uh, the all-star rule you know the the winner of the all-star game mm -hmm. gets oh, yeah, home that's field right. in the world series to me that's an even more of an egregious I'm gonna say that's uh, probably a dumber rule <laughs> give it to the team with a better record unless you have anybody else has a better idea for it no okay. I mean why are you gonna penalize a team for doing well in the regular season right and it's very arbitrary and it's I don't think it does any good at all. It was an artificial idea just because one of the games ended in a tie, and the game ended in a tie because they tried to get everybody into the, the game. That goes back to another thing. Like, just because you get picked for the All-Star game doesn't necessarily mean you ought to play. Right. Right. So right. that's another Which, 
rule rant we could go on. And speaking of the All-Star game, we'll get that into another clip soon enough, so make sure to watch out for that one as well. Lastly, we do have soccer here as one of the, I'm sorry, I should call it football. I've been calling it football for a while now, world football, uh, to not confuse the American sports audiences and the overseas audiences. But one of the rules I think that would be interesting to change for soccer uh, would be to move the penalty kicks back a little bit. I've always felt that they were a little bit close, and I understand that, like, something, I, I now understand that to the fans of world football, and as rabid as they are, penalty kicks is, like, the greatest thing in the world to them, whereas I was always about the golden goal, sudden death, just like hockey over time. It's awesome. It's, just, it's, it's intense the whole way through. But I thought if they moved back those penalty kicks, and not just for, like, regular play in a game, but during, like, a penalty shootout, it would make it a little bit more difficult on both parts uh, to make it more interesting, more exciting. I'm gonna make a video game analogy for you. Ooh. Whenever I'm whenever I'm playing FIFA and a game goes <laughs> and, a fi and a game goes to overtime and no one scores and it goes to penalty kicks, I'm like, well, if I win or you win, we're not really winning based on our skill. We're just winning on who's better guessing shooting correctly. penalty kicks. So I don't, I don't, yeah, who's guessing correctly? I don't, and I think that transcends to soccer too. I yep. mean. There's obviously a skill in being able to shoot on a goalie when you're that close to him, but it should really be finished. I mean, you have enough reserves. You should really just finish the game. Yeah, I've always thought that, I shouldn't say I always thought, how I play when I do that is uh, we just run it back. Run it back. Yeah. Same game. Play Same another, game. Play another 90 minutes. Can't lose by penalty kicks or win by penalty kicks. It's just not right, even though I did just lose to Francis in penalty kicks. <laughs> so the FIFA. better rule would just be to scrap the penalty kicks. And no, play until you have a winner. Keep, keep the penalty kicks. Keep the penalty kicks, just not for FIFA. FIFA should, the game, the video game should get rid of penalty kicks. See, we're, we're, we're differentiating here. There's, there's sports and gaming, okay. and that's a whole other <laughs> argument that we always So what does moving it back do, then? Makes it more difficult on both parties. Like, it makes it so you're not just chipping shots in from 12 feet away. What seems like 12 feet away. If I can score a penalty kick, then there should be no reason why it should be that close. They should just play on. Just keep playing? Yeah. These guys would the die out of exhaustion. They do it in Stanley Cup. Playoff hockey, guys going to quadruple overtime. The difference is with line changes and bench time, like the, the football, or the world football argument is uh, there's not enough reserves and you only get three subs, and these guys right. run. Right, somebody's going to get tired at some point, make a mistake, <laughs> and there's goal. your goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a good point. I or, like it. I'm or it. get rid of the goalies. So you can just try to shoot <laughs> shots in from 50 out, 65 out, make it a lot quicker at least. There you have it. If you guys can be commissioner, what rules would you change, or what one rule, should I say, would you change for each of the sports? We didn't touch on some sports, boxing, uh, MMA. We know we had to pick only a few. We have a certain time limit here, guys. Therefore, and girls, therefore, one rule change for at least uh, basketball, baseball, football, and world football. Leave them in the comments section below. Other rule changes for water polo, maybe track and field, you can also leave in the comments section below. We are more than open to responding to all of them. From Victor, Justin, and Jason, this has been the postgame.com and TYT Sports, the rundown. We'll see you next time.